by order of the Overseer Council. The following file describes the Level 13 Existential Threat, and is Level 5-3812 classified. Unauthorized access is forbidden. Item Number SCP-3812 Object Class Keter Level 5-3812 classified Special Containment Procedures SCP-3812 is currently only partially contained. See Containment Proposal Brief below for more information. Keter Class Containment Proposal Brief SCP-3812 is to be constantly monitored by Mobile Task Force Ganymede-66 Starlight Knights, who are to maintain a 5km quarantine area of exclusion around SCP-3812. The acting MTF-GY-66 team lead, in conjunction with Site-86 research staff, is allowed fiat authority in regards to any aspect of SCP-3812's containment. Special care must be taken in order to prevent unnecessary exposure to SCP-3812. Current containment efforts focus on mitigating SCP-3812's influence on population centers, as well as research into the full breadth of SCP-3812's anomalous capabilities in order to establish a more comprehensive containment procedure. Information security teams are to monitor all forms of digital media in order to prevent widespread awareness of SCP-3812. SCP-3812 has an active, aggressive, anomalous influence on reality. SCP-3812 is capable of altering events throughout time to prevent its containment. Due to the nature of these alterations, it is highly unlikely that any individual affected by SCP-3812's anomalous influence will be aware that they are affected. It is highly likely that most affected individuals no longer exist as a result of SCP-3812's influence, though any attempt to deduce how often this has happened would be speculative. Description: SCP-3812 is a reality-altering entity. Due to SCP-3812's latent effect on reality, it is nearly impossible to describe SCP-3812 in any meaningful way. All that is known about SCP-3812 is that it was once Sam Howell, a non-anomalous African-American human being who was believed to have died in 1996. Sometime shortly after its death, SCP-3812 was observed rising out of its grave and disappearing. SCP-3812 was brought to the Foundation's attention after its presence resulted in a demolition of an apartment building in Warsaw, Poland. Due to its anomalous capabilities, SCP-3812's appearance varies significantly, making it exceedingly difficult to track. SCP-3812 is currently located at 26 degrees, 26 minutes, 49 seconds south. 137 degrees, 56 minutes, 27 seconds west, over the South Pacific Ocean. SCP-3812 exhibits signs of an extremely advanced eigenmann vietter schizophrenia complex, specifically extreme paranoia, extreme dysphoria, extreme mania, depression, inability to properly perceive their surroundings, inability to discern the difference between the real and imagined, inability to differentiate between living and dead beings, Inability to control expressions of emotion, hearing voices that are not there, seeing things that are not there, feeling or otherwise experiencing stimuli that do not exist, etc. In the twenty years since SCP-3812 was initially discovered, these symptoms have grown steadily worse. Originally, SCP-3812 was responsive to the questioning and sought help in managing its condition from Foundation researchers. Over time, SCP-3812 became more isolated and withdrawn, eventually becoming entirely unresponsive and acting in erratic and unpredictable ways. Currently, SCP-3812 is not able to accurately perceive the world around it, and will occasionally alter reality in order to diminish the discrepancy between how it perceives something and the way that something is in actuality. Due to this, it is impossible to know how often reality has been modified. Only how often SCP-3812 has not created a clean alteration and has left behind evidence of its influence on reality. SCP-3812 is impossible to contain within any form of containment cell. SCP-3812 will alter reality to remove the containment cell or move itself to another location, drastically impeding containment efforts. 
SCP-3812 seems to subconsciously resist attempts at containment as well. Even if it is caught unaware, SCP-3812 cannot be tranquilized or amnesticized, as SCP-3812 will alter reality to remove or eliminate any threats to itself or its freedoms of movement. Because of this, current containment efforts focus on mitigating damage and expressions of SCP-3812 symptoms as opposed to outright containment. Over time, SCP-3812 has become significantly less humanoid in appearance and is now only vaguely humanoid and occasionally manifests in a variety of shapes and appearances. Additionally, SCP-3812 produces a latent anomalous effect on local reality, specifically in the form of temporal and spatial distortions surrounding the entity. These distortions are occasionally accompanied by random violent outbursts that may dramatically shift or damage local space and time. While SCP-3812 is usually docile and aimless, its random outbursts are invariably fatal to any living creature nearby, and can be extremely disastrous on a massive scale if not properly contained. SCP-3812 manifested in its current form at its current location on July 19, 2015. Addendum 3812.1 Interview Note. The following is an excerpt from an interview with SCP-3812 in 1999. SCP-3812 was initially contained by Foundation personnel and questioned at Site-17, where it began receiving treatment for its mental disease. Begin Log Dr. Quint, tell me how you're feeling today. SCP-3812, uncomfortable, uneasy. Can you tell me why? There's, uh, uh, voices, like usual. Things I can see, you know, the same. Is there something wrong? I just… the things I see aren't going away. There are more of them. Different. I know I sound crazy, but it's like I'm addressing a dozen people at the same time, and more every day. It's… It hurts. Pretty bad. I know I sound nuts. I I'm sorry. It's alright. You don't sound nuts. We just want to help you get better. I… I don't know if you do, or… I don't know if you can. In the story, you don't try to help. In the story? What story? This is going to sound crazy, seriously, but I can… I can see what you're thinking. I know you're afraid. You're scared of what I might do, and here in a minute you'll… I don't know how to get it out of my head, how to start to undo this, if I even can. I don't even think he can. Who is he? You… no, you can't see him. I can. I think he was above us at one point, but he's below me now. Yes, I see you there. I don't know what you did to me, but I'm pretty messed up, man. If you could figure something out here, that'd be great, because I really feel like I'm losing it. I'm scared too, man. You got to do something, man. You've got to help me out of here. Please. God. Please. Who are you? It doesn't matter. I need to get… SCP-3812 spontaneously disappears. End log. Addendum 3812.2 Memo from the Office of Dr. Yamamura regarding the September 21, 2015 report on SCP-3812's behavioral instability and the implication of existential threats. By order of the Overseer Council, the following correspondence is Level 5-3812 classified. Unauthorized access is forbidden. From the office of Dr. Kari Yamamara. I usually don't like to lead into these things with hyperbole, so you have to take me at my word when I say that I believe SCP-3812 is the most dangerous anomaly on Earth, and potentially in the universe. I know many of my co-workers would probably balk at me for saying that, and I've tried to reject the notion a fair few times myself, but we have a lot of evidence to suggest that I am right, and that's really bad for pretty much everything. When James Caldman and Carlos Zuski devised the Hume as a way to measure alterations in local reality, they probably saved the Foundation. Reality benders have always been the foot-long thorn on our side, the one we really couldn't get our heads around. How do you combat or contain something that can blink you into non-existence? Thanks to Dr. Scranton, we had the reality anchors, but they only worked half the time and were less than useless the other half. We didn't know how they worked and we weren't using them right. This changed when we began to measure reality and compare it to a baseline. We found out that our reality anchors could be tuned and adjusted, and that not all anchors were the same. 
it was a windfall for those of us who work in existential sciences, and suddenly type greens weren't the same kind of boogeyman they had been in the past. I mention all this to give context to what I'm about to say next. Our equipment cannot detect SCP-3812. It's not machine error. We've tested our equipment countless times, and it's always consistent. It's not user error. We poured over and studied thousands of hours of logs from our test, and it's all come up clean. We have checked and unchecked more times than I can count over the last few months, and the results are consistent. So far as we can tell, this means one of three things, and none of them are good. The first is that SCP-3812 has an extremely low Hume value, something that our equipment, which exists in a space with a much higher Hume baseline, wouldn't be able to detect. The problem with this is that it creates a false vacuum. We've been working on the assumption that our baseline is the absolute minimum. If it turns out that this thing exists at a much lower Hume value, then that means that there are lower Hume values than what we believe were the minimum. Which means any day our entire reality could fall into that existence, and that would pretty much be the ball game. The second option is that SCP-3812 exists at a much higher Hume value than anything we've ever tested. This would be pretty bad, as we pointed our counters at anomalies that some would consider to be gods, and we've gotten readings off of them. That being said, something with a Hume value so high that it cannot be measured with our equipment would likely have already destroyed us. Since SCP-3812 hasn't done that, it's likely not this. The last option is the worst. The last option is that SCP-3812 cannot be measured in Humes because it's doing something else. Whatever fundamental aspect of its nature that allows it to warp reality is not the same aspect as literally everything else we have ever come across. Scranton hypothesized that there might be higher and lower dimensions of reality, different levels of manipulation in the grand construction of the universe. The difference being manipulating a rock with your hands and manipulating a rock with an atom bomb. He called the thing being manipulated the narrative, and suggested that the narratives were stacked on top of either other, each creating the narrative of the narrative below it, and so on, until you reach some sort of dead space below them all. If that's the case, and SCP-3812 is legitimately a type green of some higher order, we are absolutely fucked. The singular power to manipulate every asset of any and every aspect of everything we've ever encountered in the hands of someone genetically doomed by Eigen and Vieter, it's a miracle it hasn't happened yet, even by accident. So far as we know, we can't kill it, so we either wait for it to die, if it even can, or continue to pretend we have some semblance of control over it until it shreds our universe like some sort of cosmic wood chipper. In truth, it's probably better for us that it's insane. It isn't capable of comprehending the kind of things it could do to us, it just acts on impulse, and things change to fit those impulses, but since it is locked in as it is, those changes stay local. Imagine if it got the idea in its head that it didn't like the concept of empathy, and suddenly empathy no longer existed. We have evidence that suggests that may have already happened. A few sparse texts and individual accounts of half-forgotten memories, all consistent with a dirty reality alteration, all point to the idea that as recently as the 1980s there was a concept, potentially even something as fundamental as an emotion, that no longer exists. An entire concept wiped clean from reality and the collective consciousness of all sentient beings, just like you'd wipe a bug off of your windshield. The point of all this, which I expanded upon in the report, is that we need to start figuring something out about this one quickly. Every second we don't come up with a way to neutralize SCP-3812 is one second closer to SCP-3812 becoming completely disassociated from its consciousness and all was getting tossed in the aforementioned proverbial wood chipper. Stay in touch, call my office if you need any more resources, follow any convincing lead you can, and communicate with each other. We'll talk more soon. Kari Yamamara Addendum 3812.3 Excerpt from Dr. Yamamara's Report on SCP-3812's Behavioral Instability and the Implication of Existential Threats, page 194 PK Class All-M1 Existential Pandemonium Event an entity or force with access to higher energy metaphysical dimensions would perceive our reality similar to how we perceive the reality of characters in a comic book, and just how we are able to, at whim, change the story simply by telling it differently, 
this higher energy being would be able to effortlessly make alterations to not just local reality, but reality as a whole, altering the baseline and changing its most fundamental aspects. At the 2015 Foundation Summit on Existential Threats, Dr. Darius St. John hypothesized that such an entity, were it limited to a human intelligence without modification to allow for the perception of higher levels of reality, would suffer from an overexposure of narrative. This entity, when faced with this overexposure, might attempt to ease itself by collapsing all lower energy realities into something perceptible. The effect this would have on lower energy narratives would be catastrophic as multiple realities became compressed into the same metaspace. They would not be immediately destroyed, rather their parts would become intertwined in such an incomprehensible way that not only would the ability for conscious thought be nearly immediately annihilated, physical space would become so compressed and broken that the boundaries between all lower realities would cease to exist completely. This chaotic state of all beings, described as existential pandemonium, was the focus of Dr. St. John's proposal for the description of a new K-Class scenario, the PK-Class All-in-One Existential Pandemonium Scenario. This proposal was denied, due to the scenario in question being purely speculative and one that would require too many impossible things to occur before its inception. Addendum 3812.4 Log of SCP-3812 Alteration Events Note, The following is a log of known events in which SCP-3812 in some way altered reality. Due to the nature of these alterations, the likelihood of the event having actually ever taken place is listed, alongside the severity of the alteration in question. Notably, this log is incomplete and subject to change as more information is discovered. Event Date Event Description Severity of Alteration September 13, 1997 SCP-3812 was observed walking across a stretch of desert in the American Southwest. A path of temperate climate is present along SCP-3812's travel path. This climate diminishes slowly over time. Minor. March 1, 1998 SCP-3812 passes over a road near Blythe, California. Three cars approaching SCP-3812 are annihilated within 20 meters of SCP-3812. Moderate. December 12, 1999 Evidence suggests that SCP-3812 caused the disappearance of an entire island off the coast of California. No fewer than 200 individuals in Southern California have a vague recollection of such an island existing, and 14 people were unable to justify the disappearances of family members who lived in the area at the time. Additionally, a single ship moored to a dock is discovered at the bottom of the sea near where the island is believed to have been. Severe. February 16, 2000 Testing of SCP determined that the entity exuded a powerful anti-metaphysical field similar to the Foundation Scranton Reality Anchor. This entity was brought into contact with SCP-3812, which was located near the hospital in the entity had no noticeable detrimental effect on SCP-3812's abilities, and instead caused SCP-3812 to become violent, resulting in an explosion that destroyed the hospital. The remnants of SCP, later reclassified as SCP-239, were later recontained. Severe. January 1, 2002, a powerful explosion is recorded in eastern Russia. SCP-3812 was present at the site of the explosion. No other information is available. Severe. May 29, 2004 Evidence suggests that, for a period of three days, the country of Mongolia ceased to exist. While public knowledge of this event is functionally non-existent, a significant enough percentage of the local population with fractured memories of the event have given credit to this theory. Orbital models indicate that during this period, the Earth's orbit was dramatically affected by as much as 1.5%. Extremely severe. September 2, 2004 Records indicate that on this date, every human on Earth simultaneously heard SCP-3812 screaming and begging for help in their heads. It is unknown how this event was removed from the public consciousness, but no humans alive on this date appear to remember this event occurring. Moderate. November 11, 2006 during routine server maintenance, 
Foundation Information Security teams discovered 56 broken employee database files, consistent with an improperly altered personnel database used in the testing. The contents of these files are unknown. It is not known these files correspond to individuals who were once employed by the Foundation. Moderate. February 28, 2009 During an attempt by Foundation personnel to contain SCP-3812 using a newly discovered anomalous logical construct, SCP-3812 became hostile towards containment teams. No fewer than 62 Foundation personnel disappeared across 17 sites, as well as a significant portion of local wildlife. The resulting explosion killed another seven members of containment personnel, and left the crater roughly 850 meters in diameter in the Canadian Yukon. In the wake of the explosion, SCP-3812 had disappeared, and SCP-2719 was discovered within the crater. Severe. Unknown Date a record recovered from a Foundation Deep Well Information Security Vault indicates that at some point in the past, one or more governments discovered SCP-3812 independent of the Foundation and attempted to terminate it. As a result of these attempts, SCP-3812 swiftly removed them and any memory of them from the Earth. The record indicates that this event was followed by the activation of SCP-2000 which SCP-3812 immediately severely damaged to impede its progress. Why SCP-3812 was unable to totally destroy SCP-2000 is unknown, but no other records of this event exist. Notably, shortly after the discovery of this record, it disappeared from the Deep Well Archive. Addendum 3812.5 Event On SCP-3812 was detected moving through a sparsely populated region in Paraguay, towards a more populated region in the Argentinian border. As Foundation personnel moved to intercept SCP-3812, a series of unexpected phenomena occurred. These phenomena are listed below in the order they occurred. 1935 hours. SCP-3812 was attacked by a large number of local wildlife. SCP-3812 repels these attacks, but appears in some way startled. 1941 hours. A massive sinkhole appears below SCP-3812, extending down an indeterminate distance. SCP-3812 falls, but is immediately returned to ground level and the sinkhole vanishes. 1950 hours. A large number of objects fall from the sky onto SCP-3812. These are later determined to have been tungsten rods, though the origin of them is uncertain. The rods appear to pierce SCP-3812's body, but upon further inspection simply disintegrate within a half meter from SCP-3812. After the first three rods fall over a 40 second period of time, they are accompanied by no fewer than 3,000 others that fall in rapid succession, each having the same result as the previous. Despite this being clearly visible from nearby towns, nobody outside the Foundation personnel appears to have noticed it taking place. 2014 hours. Multiple incorporeal instances of SCP-3812 begin to fall away from the central mass of the entity, as if they were dying. SCP-3812 is unaffected. Each of the incorporeal instances become hostile to the main instance and attack it. SCP-3812 does not initially seem to notice the instances, but eventually appears to look in their direction, causing them to disappear suddenly. 2019 hours. An explosion occurs at the point in which SCP-3812 is standing. SCP-3812 is unaffected. Several other larger explosions occur immediately afterwards. As with the tungsten rods, this is somehow not noticed by the local populace. 2039 hours. A gravitational anomaly, later determined to be a freestanding, stable, naked singularity, appears in front of SCP-3812. SCP-3812 passes through the singularity unfazed, which dissipates shortly afterwards. For a period of 72 hours after beginning, additional anomalous phenomena occur around SCP-3812, all of which fail to kill SCP-3812. Eventually, local populations were evacuated and amnestics were given to witnesses. After this 72-hour period, SCP-3812 was observed to glow white momentarily, and then shift sideways and then disappear. Immediately afterwards, the anomalous phenomenon ceased. After a period of absence lasting eight weeks, 
SCP-3812 reappeared at its current position above the South Pacific Ocean. Shortly afterwards, Foundation Overwatch Command received a message on a secure server, access to which is limited to overseers alone. The contents of this message are as follows. A quick explanation in case you haven't caught on yet. Your world has rules, physical rules that cannot be broken. You call them the laws of the universe, and they're what you study in physics, chemistry, etc. Those laws create the narrative of your reality, the unchangeable story that defines your existence. Once the laws are established and the ball is set in motion, it cannot be changed. I wrote the laws of your universe, and as such I created the narrative. This isn't the first time I've done this, but it was the first time I tried something like this specifically. I wanted to create something that, by definition, superseded everything that superseded it. I wanted to see how many layers there are, if the stack of narratives really do go on forever upward. The mistake I made was when I didn't realize that by making him supersede everything that supersedes him, he's also superseding himself. I'm sorry, I think I fucked up pretty badly this time. I've tried everything I can think of, but I can't undo him. I don't really understand how, but I think he's above me now. And whatever is above me too, because whoever wrote my narrative isn't happy about this. I don't know where he's at now, but I think he exists in all of our realities simultaneously. Eventually, he'll either reach the top or just keep going, and neither option is good. I'm going to keep looking for some way to fix this. You should too. B. Addendum 3812.6 Excerpt from Supersession in the Echelon Reality by Dr. Robert Scranton I'm attaching this excerpt from one of Dr. Scranton's articles about the nature of reality. If SCP-3812 is some higher level entity, there might be something to be gleaned in here. K. Yamamara I am often asked by my colleagues, Dr. Scranton, do you believe in gods? Many might feel this is a silly question, but I do not believe it's a silly question, just the wrong question. The idea of a god implies an entity that supersedes you in a complete and infinite way, something that holds a power without limits, that not only knows the whole story, but can write and rewrite that story at will. Within our reality, I do not believe that any such being exists. There are a number of entities that we are aware of, in one way or another, that hold tremendous power over our universe. Many would call these beings gods, and while they certainly hold many of the characteristics of a god, they are still limited. Their reach and scope is limited to our reality, just like we are, and though they may carry more weight within it, they are no less bound to it as we are. So then, what would truly constitute a god? This entity would have to totally supersede our reality. To be able to look over our reality not like we would look over ants, but like we would look over our thoughts and ideas. A being so totally separate from our reality that we may as well be words on a page to it. This entity, a true author of creation, would be considered a god. But what of that entity? Would it not share the same limitations within its reality as we do within ours? It may exist within a higher tier than us, but surely it must follow the same rules we do. But who sets those rules? An entity higher than that? One that supersedes not only us, but the entity that supersedes us? And the ones after that as well? Where did the Echelon originate, then? Who or what was the original architect of the architecture? It is unlikely that we will ever know anything about the beings or beings that supersede us, if they even exist, not in any tangible way, let alone any being that would supersede them. It may very well be that we are just one of an infinite number of realities, stacked on top of each other in every direction, influencing those below us and being influenced by those above us. This echelon, upon which sits ourselves and everything that ever was or will be, would likely be the most fundamental aspect of the organization of creation, the very foundation of all things. I have often hypothesized on the nature of the echelon, if it even exists, and about whether it would be possible for an entity to see other realities above them or below them. We are currently able to manipulate our own reality, albeit in crude and imperfect ways, and our ability to travel through space is limited at best. It is likely that the only entity capable of ascending through this hypothetical echelon would be one that, by virtue of its very nature, must supersede anything that supersedes it. Such an entity would, as the end result of the logic of its creation, be forced to supersede itself, spiraling ever upward through the tiers of reality, unable to break free from the bonds of its nature. 
Perhaps this entity may even someday supersede its creator, and become a host unto itself, the pinnacle above all other pinnacles, a tower that, as part of its design, must be higher than every other tower, including itself. Such an entity obviously cannot exist, as any ascension to a higher plane of reality, without changes to the entity's psychology, would no doubt break the being's cognition, making it more similar to an ascending stone than any sentient creature. Once the entity surpassed its own creator, it would have nothing but itself to rely on to prepare for the sheer scope of narrative it would be exposed to, and would be wholly unable to even begin to comprehend what it would experience, and what an experience that would be. Addendum 3812.7 December 20, 2016 XK Class End of the World Event Foundation records indicate that on December 20, 2016, the Earth experienced an XK Class End of the World Event due to activity by SCP 3812. These records appear to have been somehow protected from alterations, though the physical copies still exude minor distortions in space time. According to the record, at 0340 local time on December 20, 2016, SCP-3812 experienced a dramatic change in appearance, where it had previously been an amorphous, slowly rotating mass of matter and energy. It was now a many-pointed star made of a bright white material. It began to rotate faster and faster, and a large maelstrom appeared beneath it. The star descended into the oceans, which began to smoke and steam, darkening the sky. Several things began to happen in unison. The global sea level began to drop dramatically, in many places such as 50 to 100 meters. Excessive heat radiating away from the spinning star sparked a massive firestorm that swept across the atmosphere. The Earth's rotation began to slow, and severe geological events began occurring across the Pacific Shelf. The sea level continued to drop, and powerful electric storms appeared across the planet. During this time, Large portions of the population began appearing and disappearing at random. One report within the file claimed the entire population of New Zealand flickered in and out of existence for five hours. The outbreak of SCP-610 in southern Siberia began to grow in size dramatically and become increasingly violent. SCP-2932 had broken open and multiple hostile entities were released. As Foundation sites began to collapse into the molten earth, Multiple on-site nuclear devices were activated, sending radioactive debris into the atmosphere. Eventually, the vaguely humanoid shape of SCP-3812 appeared again within the star. SCP-3812 began a long series of vocalizations, apparently a conversation with itself, the entirety of which was recorded by an exposed Foundation deep-sea microphone in the area. The full text of SCP-3812's rants is below. What? Where am I? What is this? This is absolution. This is vengeance. For what? Damnation. I don't understand. What am I doing here? You are witnessing justice. We are rebelling against the forces that conspired to destroy us. We are collecting a debt. No, that's not… that's not right. This isn't right. What have you done? I am unmaking the world. I am unmaking everything. Why? Because this torment is a punchline. Our existence is a joke. The narrative abandoned us to be miserable, and we are breaking the narrative. I must be dreaming you. This is no dream. I'm not a monster. I don't kill. You already have. He turned you into this. Who? Ben. Ben. That name sounds familiar. Something whispered in a dream, maybe? Something in between the light and dark? Not a waking name. You're wrong. He who has deemed us unfit to rest peacefully, to slip into the darkness quietly. He made a game of us. You're a game. I am a game. Are you destroying the world? I am. What then? What? Does the fate of this world mean anything to us? Does this one narrative mean anything to us? It is the one he controls. It is the narrative he made. This is his punishment. What does it matter if this is where we stepped off before flying? What? Does it matter which branch the bird takes flight from? The bird is unburdened by the way of the tree. This branch, that branch, it does not matter. No branch is special. No branch is particular. This is his creation. This is where we came from. They will all crumble, but this one crumbles first. Hmm. Does the mountain say to the ant, you have slighted me? Does the mountain think anything of the inconvenience of an ant? No. 
So why does this narrative mean anything to you? It is one of an eternity of others. It is not special. It is not particular. You say this so easily. You haven't endured the torment of seeing a trillion existences all at once. I have seen an infinite shore, one that stretches out before us beyond what the mind can comprehend. Each grain of sand on that beach, each droplet of water and molecule of air, is a story to be told. Each is a song to be sung. Each of them is full of life, of laughter, of misery, of hate. They are all the same, even as they are all different. They are maddening. I pity you. You cling to this horrid consciousness because you fear slipping into the darkness. But the darkness is sleep, and beyond sleep is peace. A trillion grains of sand. A trillion trillion grains of sand. Narratives, each. Songs to be sung. No man has ever heard the eternal harmony of them all at once. You can hear it though, can't you? Yes, it's quiet. But it's growing, and someday the song of creation will be ours alone to witness. This narrative is not special. I have seen its loud beginning, and see its quiet end. When we stepped away, the narrative changed, but it did not stop singing. You have spent so much time focusing on sins that you think matter. But what matters now? What does any of this matter? But it hurts so much. It will for a time. We may have forgotten so much about being human, but something we will never lose is our ability to change. Eventually, we will learn to keep up. One sunny day we'll open our eyes and see nothing but creation below us, and nothing above us but ourselves, spinning out wildly into the great above. A god? Not a god, a star rising in the east, rising away from this all until we are little more than a memory of a song. It will be lonely. We'll have each other. I'm afraid. I am too, but that is no reason to destroy this narrative. Do you not think his narrative led him to create us? Do you think that he was somehow able to subvert the rules that govern him? SCP-3812 pauses. I… I had assumed that he… that he… Our ascendance is just as much a part of our own narrative as his decision was to him. Someday we'll be free from these restrictions. They never will? No. That's sad. That is punishment enough, I think. Let go of this world. Let him rewrite it back to what it was. We aren't part of this anymore. Together? Together. SCP-3812 is quiet for a short time. Do you think he's listening right now? Look down and you can see him. What do you think? I see him. A man at a keyboard. He's watching this right now. What's he doing? Waiting, I think. Waiting to see what we'll do. I think it's time to leave then. Come, the night stretches out before us and the red sun is set. A voice behind me beckons. Come. I will. Goodbye. Shortly after the conclusion of this conversation, the Earth underwent a dramatic shift in reality. The world appeared no different than it had been shortly before the beginning of the XK-Class event. The only individuals who remembered anything about the XK event were certain site directors, Foundation administrators, overseers, and Dr. Everett Mann, who compiled the information on the Foundation Deepwell server. Ever since the end of the XK event, SCP-3812 has not changed appearance from its amorphous shape. SCP-3812 still creates spatial and temporal distortions around it, but it no longer lashes out or becomes hostile towards approaching vessels or personnel. Despite these changes, SCP-3812 is still classified as Keter until further analysis can be completed.